Good morning, Tracy. We've just seen US cash markets close, and it's been a, a pretty positive affair. I think certainly after yesterday's um, you know, bearish take that we saw, that late session liquidation, a lot of focus on the idea that there was a, a monster buyer of SPY puts playing out and zero DT having an influence as well. We have bounced back in risk. Um, you know, if you have a look at the intraday tape of the S&P futures, we've traded to a high of 47.98 on the trading session. We've, we're pretty much closing on the highs of the day. So that's, that's obviously quite a bullish tick for the market. And participation has been fairly good. You know, we've seen 91% of stocks closing higher on the day, discretionary leading the charge. Tesla having an influence there. I mean, the stock traded down to about 248. Buyers have stepped back in and it looks like it wants to break 260, where I think we can get a, a further momentum move higher. Um, yeah, healthcare's worked well, um, tech's working pretty well. We've just seen the NASDAQ close and, and, and close up 1.4%. Really good Brett uh, playing through that market. And volumes have been okay. You know, I think people have said that the market's moved up on light volumes. When we've seen 1.6 million SP futures trade or spoos traded hands on the day, which is pretty good. Um, and you know, I think if you look at through cash market volumes through the S&P, we're about 12% shy of the 30-day average. So it's not terrible. They're a little bit light, but you know, certainly not terrible for this time of year. But sectorial-wise, you know, every sector is higher on the day. Utilities sort of underperforming there, and we've got yeah, pretty tepid tape in energy. And I think that's probably largely down to the fact that the crude price is, uh, is down 0.3% of a percent on the day. The Magnificent Seven Index is up 1.4%, and you know, that's, that's held in and, and, and supported the market certainly. Uh, and I really like what I'm seeing in semis as well. The SOX index closing up 2.4%. I think a break of tw uh, 41.30. And again, yeah, that sort of takes us up and opens up the door for 4,300. So something I'll be looking to trade there as well. Uh, you know, if you look in sort of the, 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 the risk taking that's been taking place, I mean, high short interest stocks working well on the day, you know, where the, the, the high short interest baskets are up 2.5%. So again, you know, shorts have been closing. And again, the Russell's outperformed. So we've seen small caps working quite well. We've got the Russell closing on the highs of the day at 1.7%. And again, on the daily chart, you can see here, we're just testing that top end of the range. So equity market's looking pretty good. And that should flow through to a stronger Asia. We're calling the ASX up half percent, the Nikkei up something similar as well. And the Hang Seng looking to close out the week up about 0.6%, at least on the open there as well. I like what I'm seeing in credits. If you have a look at the H1, HYG ETF, something we always look at, um, you know, credit spreads continue to tighten, the HYG continues to make new cycle highs, and as long as that's happening, um, yeah, equity markets should be fairly well supported. Uh, going to rates markets, we've seen a little bit of selling across the curve, twos are up a couple of basis points, so it's probably a bit more towards the back end, you've got 10-year treasuries up about uh, five basis points at the moment, again, hasn't really platooed uh, what we've been seeing in, in, in the equity markets, any kind of shape or form. Uh, you know, it hasn't really uh, supported uh, the dollar as well. I think the US dollar has just found what we've been seeing in the equity markets there. The dollar index uh, down about 0.6%. And I think that's largely down to the fact that euro dollar is just holding 110 at the moment. We've made a, a few sort of attempts to break uh, 110 through the trading session. And each time it's sort of taken us down to 109.80, uh, where we found good support playing through. But this time we do seem to be holding 110. We'll see how our Asian trades this one through the trading session. But yeah, euro dollar, though, certainly those, some of those shorts feeling, feeling the heat at the moment and it feel like it could squeeze you know, higher in the short term playing through. Where we've seen the outperformance though has that Aussie dollar. We're just holding 68 cents at the moment. Again, yeah, we're just really yeah, looking pretty strong in the Aussie dollar. It's been the best performer on the trading session. I think people are focused on rates there, but also if you have a look at terms of trade, iron ore's up 2.2% or so. So very, very strong moves. And we've also seen good gains in the Japanese yen as well. Dollar yen currently trading 142.24 uh, in the trading session. It feels like it wants to squeeze down to 141, but I think a lot of that's really gonna be down to how Asia trades this and, and, and we look ahead at the US data where we're going to see core PCE coming through later on. We're expecting that to pull back a little bit as well. Uh, yeah, so obviously watching what's happening in your dollar exposures playing through. Uh, we talked about crude being a little bit lower, but gold's had this continued stealth climb playing through. We're up eight, about $13 at the moment. Again, really what we've been seeing uh, in the US dollar because real rates are actually a little bit higher on the day. So yeah, that dollar weakening playing through and gold's found some solace there as well. So oh, we're expecting Asia to fire up. Yeah, you can't keep this market down at the moment. You know, bad days and then when people are looking to support, very positive trading session playing through on the trading session there.